welcome to a special episode of the Simply Jesus podcast. I really want to tell you about one of my favorite books that I've recently found. It really kind of shifted a lot of things for me on the way I see the Lord, and I want to share it to you. So this it's called The Story of God with Us. It is written by Kenneth Paget and Sean Gregory, and it is illustrated by Aidan Peterson. So here's my proposal. I would like for you to let me just read this over you. I know we don't get a lot of chances as adults to have people read over us or read to us. And I really think this book will bless you. So if you will just give me like 10 minutes, let me, it's probably less than that, but let me read this over you. And if you want to see the beautiful, beautiful pages that are in this book, they're, I mean, they're really amazing. Um, then they're going to be on the YouTube video that I do um, along with this. So, okay, so let's go get cozy and let me read this over you. Most great stories start a long, long time ago, but this one is so old that no one knows when it began. Most great stories also happen somewhere far, far away, but this one happens right where you're sitting. It happens at the dinner table and at your favorite park, at your bedside in the morning light and even in the dark. It happens each and every moment, every hour and everywhere, because God who has always been is always there. That's not what this story is about. We'll jump in somewhere along the way when God made the most beautiful garden. It was filled with life and light as the cool wind swirled through the brush and trees, the greenest greens danced around four glistening streams. The fish, the flowers, the flocks, and the fruit were sparkled with colors of every hue. God's good garden was made for one reason, so he could dwell with us and we with him, always and forever, world without end. But you'll never guess what happened next. God's people chose darkness over life, death over life. What were they thinking? They wouldn't listen to the one who loved them most? So with a broken heart, God sent them out of the garden. They wandered east and down to a dark place filled with dust, danger, and death. They thought they could live without God, and surely they tried. They built a tower for themselves, a hollow mountain of pride. But God wouldn't have it. Every move he was about to make would be for one reason, so he could dwell with us and we with him, always and forever, world without end. God put an end to their prideful project. He scattered all the families of the earth across the land to the north, south, east, and west. It seemed like God was farther away than ever before, but those who knew God knew better. All creation eagerly waited. A hush fell over God's army of angels. The stars and the planets leaned in to listen. Then it happened. With the power of a thousand falling mountains, God's voice echoed over the face of the land and on and on into forever. He spoke fresh love-filled promises to a man called Abraham. Through one of Abraham's royal sons, God promised to draw all the scattered families of the earth together again. He promised Abraham a new land filled and flowing with life and light. Children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren would fill the earth like the sand of the seashore and the stars of the sky. This time, God himself would see it through. And you know why? So he could dwell with us and we with him, always and forever, world without end. After hundreds of years with various twists and turns, God prepared Abraham's family to enter into that lush garden land. They were a big, big family now, and he met them at his mountain in the dry, dusty desert. He had them set up a special tent filled and flowing with all the same wonderful sights and smells of his mountaintop garden. He told them to set it up in the middle of their camp where his presence would shine like a big burning lamp. He arranged it all just for one reason, so he could dwell with us and we with him always and forever world without end. God led the camp from place to place until they finally settled in that long promised land. Then one day, a royal son of Abraham named David ascended the throne. And like a heavy rain on thirsty land, God showered loving and life-giving promises over him saying, David's kingdom will never ever end. He shall have a son with who 
will reign and rule over the families of the earth from everlasting to everlasting. From the love that God poured out on David, there sprang forth the most magnificent garden palace anyone had ever seen. Decorated with glittering gold gilt trees, fancy carved fruit, flocks and flowers flowing in the breeze. Then when it was all ready, God filled it with his life and light and a city blossomed around it. Just like the special tent and the ancient garden long before it, God's temple was built so he could dwell with us and we with him always and forever a world without end. But you'll never guess what happened next. God's people chose darkness over light, death over life. What were they thinking? They broke his heart and had to leave the garden palace. They were carried off to the east and down to a dark place filled with dust, danger, and death. Once again, all the families of the earth were so scattered across the land that it seemed like God had finally let them go. But those who knew God knew better. A hush fell over God's heavenly host. The hearts of every bird, beast, and being with breath in his body skipped a beat. The stars, the planets bowed down in the clear, silent night. And with the gentleness of a snowflake lending just before an avalanche, the long-awaited royal son of David, the greatest grand, great-grandson of Abraham, the everlasting King Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us finally appeared to face the darkness on his own. Defeating death, he filled the whole world with life and rose to his royal throne. In those days, King Jesus poured out loving and life-filled promises saying, I will always be with you and never ever leave you. So on and on through the generations, his word remains true. Through the spirit of his royal son, all the scattered families of the earth are being drawn back together into God's presence again, but you'll never guess what happens next, maybe sooner than you think. Children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren will fill the earth like the sand of the seashore and the stars of the sky. God will make the whole world into a new land filled with flowing, filled and flowing with his life and light. A city will blossom around his presence the most magnificent garden city anyone will ever see. It's the way God always promised it would be, so that he can dwell with us and we with him, always and forever, world without end. As you can see, this is quite a different type of story because this one is still unfolding. And you, dear child of God, are actually living right smack in the middle of this great story. These are the days of King Jesus, when all the families of the earth are being drawn back together again. <laughs> it makes me emotional how much the Lord loves us. Right now, you're living in the land that God will one day turn into the Garden City. So keep watch. He's with us. Listen for his voice. It may come with the power of a thousand falling mountains or look like cool rain on dry ground. It may come with the gentleness of a snowflake landing or without even the slightest sound. But know that he is dwelling with us and we with him, always and forever, world without end. So I just want you to be reminded that the Lord will go to the ends of the earth to spend time with you, that he just wants to dwell with you. It's about a relationship with the Lord and he has really gone to great lengths so that he can be with you. So may you be blessed by this story.